Joining us this week, Life Gain subscriber Vent, Hot Takes, the unfiltered one himself, Stevie P. And he's got a hot take on Colin Kaepernick going to the Ravens. Let's see what it's all about. What's good, YouTube? All knowing, all loving, all feeling, all seeing, all powerful. Just damn all everything. Sexy as hell host. And we in here doing a Life Grain subscriber event. Always remember, if you want to get up here and give me your hot take on anything you got to say, hit me up. I'm a YouTuber that believes in the people. I am definitely a man of the people. And I'm so happy to introduce to the people my homeboy from middle school. We go back to the Florida State Notre Dame days in sixth grade. My man, the unfiltered one, Stephen P. Stevie P, what's on your mind today, brother? Ah, just living the life, my man. Just living the life. What can I tell you? So, you had a hot take you wanted to talk about. I, I dropped something last week, and it got you hot. What was it we're talking about today? Uh, this Colin Kaepernick thing, my man. Ah, oh, hell. <laughs> will not go away. <laughs> you know, I've really tried my best to, you know, be diplomatic about stuff. And, you know, try to walk the fence, you know. Don't want to ruffle any feathers. But at a certain point, you just got to call a spade with a, you know, call a spade a spade. Like, you can't see a field full of bullshit, and eventually you ain't gonna call it fertilizer. You're gonna call it bullshit. So let's just call it what it is. So what, what do you think about the whole issue? What, where do we, where do you want to begin? Do you want to begin with Michael Vick's statement on Colin, or do you want to dive into what's going on this week with him possibly being entertained by the Ravens? Well, I'll touch on the Michael Vick situation, and I'm gonna address this, you know, from the standpoint of being a black man, I don't feel that it's a black man's place to go and try to publicly chastise or correct another brother. Okay. You know, I feel like as brothers, we should be trying to encourage each other. You know, let's not take time to talk about this guy and his hair. Like, his hair really has to do with the situation that he's in anyway. And, you know, I just kind of feel like sometimes we as brothers have to take time to recognize where we come from. You know, right. and when you recognize where you come from, you kind of have a, you kind of have to have a level of humility about things, and you know you should be encouraging this guy. You know, not talking about oh, cutting your hair and walk and talk and dress in a certain way will we'll get him anyway. I mean, does Michael Vick forget that when he first got out of the prison, he was looked at as you know one of the lowest people in the world? There's still plenty of people who still to this day see him not as clean cut short hair Michael Vick they still see him as Mr. Cornrows guy who was fighting pit bulls they still see him as that thug and see I got a running joke with my wife it's just a joke I always tease her Anglo-Saxons like their dogs better than they like black people well, that's just a joke And but you do have people that love their pets period and when you have people that love pets as much as they do you can see why it would be very hard for people to get over what Michael Vick did with his dog fighting I understand. Uh, um, yes, I definitely understand that. I get that. You know, what he did was a bad thing, but, you know, I'm one of those people, I like to take things in perspective. You know, fighting dogs versus taking a knee. Two, completely see, two different subjects, you know what I mean? Like, you can't exactly. even compare the two. Yeah, you can't compare the two, exactly. So, therefore, you have to judge each case on its merits, and, you know, just you just have to, to keep moving along. So, I do think that Michael Vick did the right thing by going back and pulling back his statement. Because I think somebody probably spoke to him and probably told him that, hey, you know, one brother should not put down another brother like that. You know, we should be trying to help lift each other up. At the very at the very least, stand beside each other. You right. Know? And he was the wrong one to, to bring up that issue in the first place. I do agree we should try to uplift each other. But I do, I do fully think that if someone is doing something that is wrong and you care about them, brother or not, brother to brother, you should say, hey, bro, you know, what you're doing could hurt you. But that didn't pertain to what happened with Michael Vick and Colin Kaepernick. Like, Tiger Woods would have been so much better if one of his right-hand man would have said, dude, you got a lot of money you're going to lose by doing all this cheating out here on these streets. Somebody should have, in that situation, said, Tiger, you need to sit your ass down, quit all this cheating. 
before you, number one, flip out, number one, lose all your money, and number two, put your family in jeopardy. That would have been a situation where somebody should have grabbed that half-brother and said, sit your ass down somewhere. But it it didn't pertain to the Michael Vick thing. Well, in my opinion, Bergara Taco is, like, that's a whole other subject I could go all day on, but I'm going to simply say, when you are someone of stature, and especially when you're young, you know, you don't have to necessarily go and rush to get married, rush to have these kids, and kind of paint this picture of this family man. Family man. Look at Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle went a long time, was known to be one of the biggest players on the street back in those days. That's what you did. You know, that's part of what made him who he was. Look at Derek Jeter. Part of Derek Jeter's image and why he's seen as such a hero now is because during his playing time, he was known for being that Casanova. You know, Tiger Woods was trying to have his cake and eat it too. He was trying to live two lives. And right. Play. And so people don't like that, bro. People don't like that. So now with Colin Kaepernick, what are the Ravens going to do? I, I'm hearing they might get him. What, what's going on with that? Um, they're keeping him in consideration. They did bring him in and they did have some talks and I was really confident that they were going to sign him and then at the last second they kind of backed away from it. They would keep him in consideration. And then I read a story about them signing some guy, I can't even remember his name, but the last thing he was doing was working a part-time job and doing real estate. <laughs> I mean, of all the backup quarterbacks that we know actually at least took a snap last year, um, this guy. So at this point, it kind of, that ruffled my feathers a little bit just because of the fact that they went as far away from a proven veteran backup quarterback that you could possibly go. I mean, it's like they want to make sure that they steer completely clear of Colin in that situation. So, and then the next day, that's when I saw all the hate mail that the Ravens were apparently getting. And I'm sitting here saying to myself, I don't remember quite this much backlash over the Ray Wright situation. Same team. And we saw the video. We, I still replay the video in my head. I mean, you know, that was just a, a hard shot. And... You know, as a brother, it kind of makes me say to myself, so you're emotionally disturbed more by this man taking a social stance than you are a man placing his hands on a female. Okay. Yeah, it, it, but I mean, does that surprise you considering we're in the era of Trump where all the things we teach our kids that are innocent, sweet, and enduring, Trump has just ripped that scab off and let you know what life is like as an adult. And he's just ripped off the scab of some of the ugliest people and behavior being accepted we've ever seen. Like this week, Scaramucci basically cussing out and punking Rinx Priebus, and that man done lost his job. It's like Scaramucci got rewarded for giving a laced, cuss-filled tirade, and the guy that he sent that tirade to is fired. It's like you got rewarded for bad behavior, and it seems like our society that really loved that type of stuff has embraced that behavior and is sprinkled into sports now. You've got the fans sending hate mail because a guy took a knee, which is his right, um, versus all these people that have done way worse behavior that's criminal behavior. And you didn't get no hate mail about that. Exactly, exactly. And that's one of the biggest things that bothers me is that I know that it's not everyone that feels that way. Right. But those voices are the loudest voices. Right. Always. Yeah. If there's one thing that I will say that I am actually encouraged by, it's the amount of people that are actually standing up to that form of rhetoric. rhetoric. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we saw it in the entire campaign. I've said the entire campaign. This man polled the same 35 to 40 percent through virtually the entire election. Mm -hmm. So pretty much we realize that there's about 35% of the population that has certain feelings. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It's fine. It's not really fine, but I understand. But I am encouraged by the fact that while 3 to 4 out of 10 might feel that way, that tells me that 6 out of 10 don't feel that way. Right, and exactly. Therefore, I feel more hopeful than I do pessimistic about the future of things. Exactly. And I think that in the end, you know, good will win, and who knows, maybe a few hearts will get changed between now and then. If not, it's the theory of evolution. 
right. those that can see evolve and adapt will do better. Like, for example, all the jobs that are being created now, what they don't tell you is how many jobs are of the technological form. In other words, the more you build this, the better your chances are now. Education is always going to be the key. No anymore. Once upon a time, you can say, "Oh, right, it's about who you know." Now it does matter a little bit about what you know. Mm -hmm. so I'm hopeful for that. And and the thing that supports what you're saying, did you see where Jeff Bezos, though, the guy that owns Amazon, he is the new richest person in the world, Techie. Exactly, exactly. And uh, I just saw that Steve Jobs' widow just bought the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it just shows you that. It's all about expanding your mind and broadening your, your horizons and diversifying. Like, not don't just diversify your portfolio monetarily, but diversify your portfolio in your mind. Right. You know, yep. You got to be able to adapt. Animals adapt. We better adapt. We better do something. So, and I'm going to get you out of here on this. What are your expectations for your giants? I see that nice giant pride behind your behind <laughs> you up there. Well, what are your expectations for the giants? Then I'll get you out of here on that. Well, you know, with my Giants, it's definitely a love-hate relationship. I would say the, being a Giants fan is almost like, that's almost like my, my my wife. You know, you have your great days, and then you have your days where you're like, ugh, huh. you know. <laughs> like, this team could... You better hide this video, bro. <laughs> they could be 14-2, and two, or they could be 6-10. and 10. They're that kind of a team. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm going to love them either way, no matter what. That's just, that's just all it is. You're going to love them. So I'm going to love them, man. You know, hey, my dream scenario, we take down those pages one more time and save America. You're welcome for the other two times we've done. We're going to work on doing it a third time. No doubt. Well, my dream scenario is that y'all ain't got to worry about the damn Patriots because the Miami Dolphins is going to slay that division. And that's all just... Right. That's just optimistic thinking because we ain't beating no damn body no time soon. But I'm just going to be hopeful regardless, you know. There's always men. So, you always see? There. See? No. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. If you want to get up here and life gain subscriber event, hit me up www.facebook.com forward slash 07 life games you'll be seeing this young man again as sports year hits stevie p anything you want to represent you want to let people know how they can get in contact with you on facebook or anything like that so they can hear your unfiltered takes um yes i actually created a group called the water cooler um basically just find my profile or just search for the water cooler it's an open group feel free to, to request and join We'll talk there. Basically, the concept of the water cooler is you discuss whatever's on your mind, completely unfiltered, just like we do around the water cooler at work most of the time. Anyway. No doubt. Check my video description, ladies and gentlemen. Check out my past videos. Do business with me. Check out my affiliates. To that next sexy as hell life game subscribe event, I'll see you. Enjoy the content on my channel. Please take your cursor. Click the subscribe button. If you want to receive an alert every time I drop a new video, click the little bell. And if you want to connect with me on Facebook, you can click this button. If you want to connect with me on my other social media, I got a button for you here, a button for you here. And if you're one of those people that want to make a donation, donations can be made through my Patreon account by going to www.patreon.com forward slash life gains. You can also get private videos done. This is how you can support my channel. Just click here and become a Patreon and you will continue to get great content by LifeGame.